Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Catholic Recon Testimonies from Reverts and Converts. I'm your host, Eddie Trask. This week's guest is Marty Rotella. You know what, Marty? First, let me what? say hi to you. Hey. How, how, how are you? Good. I'm doing great, Eddie. Thanks, man. Great to see you. Great to hear you. Oh, my gosh. Life it's, is beautiful. Life is beautiful. So Marty is a singer, songwriter, and a producer he started out in, it says, pop music when he was 15 years old. Since 1980, he has been focusing mainly on religious music and bringing his audience closer to Jesus and his mother Mary. His most popular CDs are Whisper of the Wind, Meet My Friend, Rays of Love, and I Wait on Tepeyac. And I got to tell you, I had a chance to listen to some of Marty's music, and I absolutely love it. It is I'm not even going to try to classify it. It's, it's got a little bit of everything in it. And that's something that I uh, appreciate, Marty. I really appreciate that, you oh know, much like, the, much like the Catholic faith, there is a diversity there. There is a depth there. Um, do you play all those instruments, by the way? Um, I play keyboard. Uh, mostly my brother Jules is, uh, Jules. He's, the he's the main producer, yeah. Yeah, uh, he plays keyboard also, um, and uh, we we put down keyboards the both of us. But then uh, everything else is we bring in some of the probably the best musicians around the country. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's fantastic. Um, so Marty, how how did your journey begin? Did you start? I mean, it says at fifteen you were already in music. I know that's a big part of the story. But how did how did your childhood go related to religion? Yeah, well, first of all, you know, I was a uh, cradle Catholic and uh, received my confirmation. And at the age of 14, that's exactly when I became a professional singer. Uh, before that, in my house, you had to learn classical piano. My father was a musician. So um, my brother was my teacher. He was seven years older and tremendous teacher. He's teaching me classical, you know, but I, I was a little bored. So I would do this. La da da dee, la da 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 la da dee, la da. I would sing them the classical, you know, melodies, and he goes, "Why do you do that?" I said, "I don't know. I, I, it's fun." So he says, uh, "You know, you have a decent voice." I said, "Oh, really?" He goes, "Don't tell Dad, but I'm going to show you chords, and then you can sing any song in the world." I said, "Really? Yeah, show me." So he shows me chords, and um, you know, I started doing stuff like you know. Wise men say only fools rush in. You know, and I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool. But my father came home early that day when he was showing me. I didn't know. And he opened the door and he said, what's this? And I said, Elvis? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes to me, he goes, uh, he goes, yeah, he goes, uh, that's pretty good. I said, what? He said, your voice. I said, really? Now, my father had a band with my brother, my uncles. And uh, he said, you want to come out with my band and, and sing? So I looked at him. I was a wise guy. And I said, uh, yeah, you're going to pay me? He said, yeah, I'll pay you. I said, OK. He said, learn six songs. So I learned six songs. And the first song I sang in public was this. I'll be there. I'll be there. Jackson 5, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm singing that. And people noticed me. And that was it. Now, I'm 14 years old. First time girls and people noticed me because I could sing. And I thought this was awesome. Uh, so that's why I became a singer. But from 14 to 24, I got well known very quickly. And then my God turned to fame, fortune and money. That was it. That became my God. And I kind of pushed God to the, you know, to the background. Um, I sang the national anthem for all, a lot of the major teams in New York City. The highlight was Madison Square Garden. The Rangers walking out on the ice, you know, on the carpet. It was cool. Yeah. Um, I sang in movies. The first movie I ever sang in was Friday the 13th. Can you believe that? There you go. <laughs> I know. I know. It makes no sense. But remember, I wasn't with God. My God was fame, fortune, and money. So then uh, I started writing commercials. And uh, the first commercial my brother and I worked on was called, uh, was for um, Kodak Film. So that was a big company way back then. So uh, we were moving. We were moving, you know. And all of a sudden, I got a record contract deal at the age of 24 to open for Bill Cosby in Las Vegas, June of 81. And boy, that's it. There's the fame, fortune, and money. And I looked at the contract, and it read, 
$2.2 million, just a sign, plus a house in Lake Tahoe. Mm, $3 million deal. I said, this is great. I want this. This is it. My lawyer was Billy Joel's lawyer at the time. So he was busy with Billy. So he gave my contract to this young kid. And this young kid, he researched it. And the first thing he said was, this is the best entertainment company in the world. You'll be rich and famous. They have a 100% track record. I said, yeah, that's it. Rich and famous. That's all I want. And then he said this, but, but, now there can't be any buts. What's the but? He said, well, he said, um, these are some bad dudes that are running this company. He said, and uh, if you sign this contract, you got to do anything they tell you. I like what? I was a wise guy. He said, well, you know, you'd have to write music for pornographic films. I said, I ain't doing that. That disrespects women. He says, you have to, they own the companies. And then as a wise guy, again, I said, well, what if I don't? What if I say no? Oh, you can't say no once you sign that contract. He said, you got to do it and they'll never harm you. You're their equity. They will harm your loved ones. What? what? That make so I ran home that night, the night before the signing, and I said to my dad, dad, what do you do? He said, I didn't fight in World War II for anybody to own me. He said, son, I'll back you no matter what. Thanks, dad. Then my mother runs in with the rosary. And my mother never talked about the music industry in, in our family. She just, you know, uh, that wasn't her place, but she ran in holding her rosary. And she said, you know, it was like this, you know, she's holding her rosary. She's going, she's going, Marty, she's going, I've been praying this for you your whole life, especially when you were 14 years old going into those places. And I know you were doing all the wrong things, but I was home praying. I said, Ma, but why the rosary? She said, it's holding Mary's hand. I said, Ma, why would you hold Mary's hand? She said, because Mary stood at the cross. His best friends ran away. I don't want to run away. I want to stay there. She says, so I hold her hand. And this was my prayer to Jesus every night for you. Four words. Jesus, protect my son. That's it. That hit me like the greatest gift my mother ever gave me. I said, Ma, that's better than your cooking. <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. You prayed that for me every night, every night. So I went to the signing the next day. I stood up and I said, I don't think I'm going to sign this. I said, maybe down the road. And they picked the table up with all the food on the table and they threw the table and the food onto me. And my agent and my manager, they walked out cursing me out. I said, wow, I made the right decision. Why? Because of my mother's prayer. I better get back to God. So I didn't know if I was going to come back Catholic. So I researched all the religions in the world. It took me about six months. And then I realized historically, the most historical two religions are Jewish and Catholic. They start with Adam and Eve and they still going on today but what's the difference jesus i don't know him i bought a bible and then i read the four gospels man i fell in love with him i read them over and over and over and i knew i had to come back to catholicism i knew it so i called a priest friend of mine and i said yo father you got some time tonight i need a confession he says um i got all night i said to him you're gonna need it <laughs> so that was it I'm and he said morning now it is a mass starting. He said, receive Jesus like you never received them before. And I said, what do you mean receive Jesus? I didn't know he was alive in the Eucharist. He said, Monty, Jesus is in the bread. When you receive him, you're receiving God. I said, really? I ran out there. I went to mass and I received Jesus. This was 43 years ago. First time in my life that I knew he was in there. And I was filled with this warmth, this love that I never felt before. And I knew that that was it. That was the catalyst I needed to continue and now go out and sing for God and, and see what he has prepared for me in, in the world of music in his, in his realm, not you know what I wanted. And uh, I, I've been receiving him ever since. Every day, I'm a daily communicant. I haven't missed mass in 43 years. And you know what the key is? That's what's built spirit power. Now, the songs just started to come. Once I gave him my life, and by the way, I consecrated my life to him through Mary. Because if my mother loved the Blessed Mother, I said, I love you. I don't know you, but I love you. Uh, and of course, she didn't bring me to her. She brought me to Jesus. So the key here is, is that uh, the songs just started coming. And since, nine, uh, since uh, 81 till now, 
I've written over like 4,300 songs. They just <laughs> keep coming. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. I'm just open. It's not I, none of them. I don't want to write any of them. They just kind of come. So uh, that's been the journey. That's a, a, hopefully a quick synopsis of oh my. Like, what I. Gosh, I love it. So Jesus protect my son is what she is what she was praying right. for for all those years. I ten years forward, four yeah, years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe four. I counted to five, but yeah, four. four, no, four yeah. But you know what's unbelievable? Four words. You know what knows unbelievable? I actually got a rosary every day since I was six months old because I almost died. I had a boil on the top of my head. The doctor said it's going to hit the brain. It's going to die. She, my mother, got on her knees. And she promised Jesus she would pray a rosary for me every day that she was alive on this earth, just for me. She has four children, but for me, she had to pray this one if I was if I was spared. And I was spared. And so then I found that out, that she's been praying a rosary for me every day. That would have been 25 years of rosaries every day, plus 10 years of Jesus protect my son. Wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty crazy. That's crazy. Okay. So you're 24 years old. You're getting, you make that massive decision, a decision that I, I cannot even imagine the majority of 24 year old making again, that age just sticks with me. Like that, that's a, a miracle. What happened there is for you to oh, yeah. have your eyes open clearly. Um, so what did that look like? Did you feel peace saying now i don't even know i had three million dollars right there just needed to sign what did that transition look like back into i guess uh regular regular pedestrian life well devil on his shoulder like in the cartoons angel on his shoulder i was tortured you idiot blah 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 and then yeah. no that's good Wait to see what God's going to show you. So back and forth, back and forth. What am I doing? This is everything I wanted. So there was a battle. There was a battle. But when the first song came, and the song was called Blessed Virgin Mary, Our Lady, I was walking past my grand piano in my house, and I was actually pushed down, two hands on my shoulders, sat down, and this song just came, words and music, within three minutes. <laughs> You know, it, it, this is it. Blessed Virgin, Mary, our lady, mother of the Savior, mother of Jesus, mother of God, help save the world. Open our eyes. This just came. And I said, wow, that's pretty good. You know, you know, I mean, and then I realized it wasn't me because I didn't want to write it. And I said, wow, I'm an instrument. Kind of like what St. Mother Teresa says, you know, be a pencil in God's hands. So I was a pencil and he wrote this song through me. Then I knew, then I knew I just had to be open. If I go to mass every day and receive them, and if I'm open, he's going to, he's going to write songs and he's going to lead me to where I have to go. It wasn't easy, but it was a journey. Yeah. So then this continued, um, how long did the battle, the spiritual aspect of this continue? Because uh, that always fascinates me. Sure it does. Well, remember, this is never overnight. A lot of people yeah. say, oh, I was, everything's perfect. You know, yeah. I never seen that in my life. It's a, it's a road, but that's where the Eucharist comes in. Because Jesus said, take and eat if you want life. That, that's what really led me. I want life. I don't want death. So I want this life. So I just keep going. And in the Eucharist, he heals spiritually. He heals psychologically, emotionally, physically. And when I saw that and felt it and the song started to come, and then I was really interested in the faith because the faith is gigantic. We can spend lifetimes studying the faith and it's just so much more and so much more. So I was so excited. And then, then the excitement took over the questions of, did I do the right thing? You know, oh, wow, what could I have had? You know, yeah. that, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So the regrets yeah, just melted away. Now, how did the music writing, songwriting, how did that transition to the retreats that you lead? And if you can just, yes, spend some time speaking about that in general, what these retreats are, what it is that you focus on, what you see in other parishioners, et cetera. Okay. 
Well, what happened is, is uh, my, my wife left the marriage 17 years into the marriage, okay? When she did that, I moved out. I have two children. And I said, you stay in the house with the children. I'll move out and maybe, you know, we'll work this out. Well, it never worked out, but it's okay. Because the Blessed Mother led me to adoration every night. I went from 12 to 1 o'clock every night for four years straight. St. Lucie's in Newark, New Jersey. And that's where he taught me. Every hour I had a paper and a paper, a paper and a pencil. And he was just teaching me, showing me. And that's where spirit power came. My ministry is called spirit power. One night I was there and this song spirit comes out of nowhere and I write it down. I'm singing it. And it goes like this spirit, be my wisdom, be my words, lift me up. Spirit grow inside me. Keep me yours, help me love. I said, wow, I like that. That's nice. I'm, I'm all excited. I go back the next night and he writes a song called Power Through Me. You know, power, the power within, the power of God becomes my power within. So I was told in my heart, there it is. That's your ministry, spirit power. Everything will come. And he did. He just showed me for four years, four years, one hour a night. And I was writing and writing and writing. I got got books and books of writings. And that's what led to the retreats. So I give retreats with music. And it's interactive. It's always interactive. I throw questions out. And I have maybe about 200 different retreats on paper. But um, whatever the church needs or whatever the group needs, I I always go to prayer and make sure I write it up for each talk. Um, with music, you know, but the thing is the, the most exciting one is called spirit power. And there's three questions. Who is God? Who am I? What is love? And I was taught in my heart that those are the three most important questions you can ask every day. Not once, not twice, every day before you get out of bed. God, who are you? I want to know more about you. Who am I? You created me. I want to know more about me. And what is love? And that's the purpose. Our purpose is to love. There's no other purpose. Everybody says, my purpose is to be a mother, a father. My purpose is to be a teacher, a doctor. No, your purpose is to love no matter where you are, no matter who crosses your eyes. Amen. Amen. So with the retreats, with the retreats, with the music, with the upbringing, it clearly appears that the 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 story is one of just being completely open and we say that a lot and i get that i mean we talk about just being open constantly having abandonment surrender now i have asked this before and i get different answers from different people of course but what for those that don't know what that looks like how as you mentioned being this vessel being this you know pencil in god's hands what would you tell people and what do you tell people when they're saying, I don't even know what to do? I mean, I, I'm asking those questions, Marty, that you, that you want us to ask in the morning, but I don't know how to open myself up more. Yeah. Well, let's look at this. I'm an Italian-American from New Jersey, close to New York City. There's no way that I could listen to God. Because, you know, you're always moving, you're always, you know, you're always out there. And he had to work on me first before I could teach anybody. And if he could do it with me, he could do it with anybody. And the key was adoration. Okay. Sitting in front of Jesus, stopping. And, you know, adoration doesn't always have to be in church in front of our Lord, because our Lord is everywhere. So I, I find the creek or, a, or an ocean, or I find a lake and I sit there. And I connect with them. Uh, my couch, in my, uh, where I'm sitting right now, in my apartment, uh, is where I connect with him. And it's a constant connection. And as you do that, you can connect all the time with him. Not fanatical, not on the streets, just you. Now, now this is, this is dangerous. Our own thinking. The brain is beautiful. It's a gift from God, but it's our own thinking. If we think with this, it could be dangerous. We have to think with our heart. That's what I was taught. So how do you do that? You stop. And you listen. Now, people say, well, I don't hear God. You hear God? No, I don't hear him here. It's here. This is where he lives. The soul is the center of the heart. So if we go here and we stop, 
You know, right away we want to, you know, men want to want to solve women's problems. Don't don't solve anybody's problems. Let them speak. You ask them questions. Tell me more. How you feel? How are you? You know. So the key here is is go into your heart and allow God to be your words. Allow God to be your wisdom. Allow God to lead you. And it's much better than this because this always leads us to addictions, uh, other things that are not, not good, false. We want the truth. Truth will set you free and it's in the heart. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, just being, I remember hearing this from a few people um, that, that are not currently uh, pursuing the faith, but they are in, I guess, yeah, certain Christian uh, denominations. So these people said that they cannot sit, that they have trouble sitting, like in other words, in silence. And you mentioned it, like New York, New Jersey, all the noise, all the distractions, the, the fast pace. So for many people, they could be in the most remote area in the world, and they still cannot, I guess, commit themselves to sitting and and doing exactly what it is that you said i hate to keep pressing on this issue but i know there are a lot of people that that deal with this for those mm -hmm. that say i can't sit i don't want to hear silence what what should they do if it, even that first step is difficult well remember this it's so easy to say i can't that's easy i can't all right, <laughs> what am I going to do there? See, God gives us an option. Do you want me or not? It's like in the Star Wars movies. Star Wars says, do you want the light or the dark side? Well, I want the light. Well, you got to be still then. If you want the light, you got to be still. You know, I just, I just was with somebody this weekend, and they said to me, I can never be still. Same thing you're telling me. And I said, well, then you're never going to find the peace of God in your heart because that's what you have to do. Jesus went into the mountains, to the deserts. Why? To teach us and show us that we have to be still. So don't say I can. Change that negative to positive. I can. I will. That's what I did. And boy, it changed my whole life. You know, um, to be still means shut everything off. Everybody's like, no, well, I have to have TV on. I have to have some noise. I have something movement. I have to have the, the phone in my hand. No, you got to stop. And when you do it you say well i don't hear him well let me tell you if you picked up somebody's wallet and you you were going to steal it but then you put it back because you knew it was wrong you heard god that's your conscience so you do hear him so the key here is is that don't say i don't hear him don't say i can't stop change that and say i will i have to i can the best place is the blessed sacrament in church because that's where he is I love, I love a blessed sacrament at night and I love candles lit because it gives me a tremendous atmosphere of peace. There's a creek in my town. I go to the creek every day and I sit there. Now there's still noise. I hear traffic and airplanes and stuff, but in front of the creek, there's the, the, the beautiful sound of water, which is so from God. And that brings me to a peace. That's where I can close my eyes and just listen. People also bring some paper and a pencil. Just write stuff down. It might sound crazy. All of a sudden, you write the word banana. Why am I writing that down? Yeah, you can laugh, laugh. You can laugh, say, hey, I wrote banana. I'm... But this is God. God is also a comedian. He's loving. He's funny. So he might show you something through that word. And that's what I'd recommend. Very good. Very good. Um, the other thing I want to ask is for those parents of Marty's current Marty's that are ages 14 to 24 not necessarily pursuing a, a music career uh, what advice would you give to the parents in those situations where they have those teenagers they have the you know the kids in their young or early 20s that might be pursuing just the earth I mean you can see it. it's not even a matter of are they on the fence they are just full on in the world what's your advice Three words, I love you. Sincerely from your heart, every day. That makes the biggest difference. Probably the greatest 
little bit of wisdom that I've given my children, and they'll tell you this. My son's 41. My daughter's 39 now. I have three granddaughters, too. And this is what I tell them. And they say, this is the best wisdom. I can't change anyone else. I can only work on myself. So if you want your life, your family, if you want the country to change, if you want the world to come back to peace and love, start with yourself. Don't point fingers at everybody else. Oh, the president, the pope. Yeah, don't do that kind of stuff. My wife better change. My husband better change. No, you look in the mirror and say, what are you going to do to make the world a better place? That's what your kids need. They need you to say, I love you. They need you to say, I, I, um, I have confidence in you. I'm proud of you. These are the things that are needed. And once that starts, there's a better connection. And you might th not think they're listening to you, but they're taking it in. Because if it's real, and the first time I was ever into a prison, working with prison ministry, this man came up to me and he said, you better be real. And I didn't know how to answer that. So I, I asked the Holy Spirit in my heart and I heard, tell him you love him. I said, I love you. He goes, what? You don't even know me. I said, yeah, but you never heard those words. That's why you're here. Probably your father never said that. 80% of the people in jail never heard I love you from a father figure. So I love you. He turned and said, I, he turns to all the men in the prison. He says, sit down, guys. This is going to be awesome. He's real. So that's why I, I say I love you now to everybody. I'll go into a 7-Eleven. I'll go into a restaurant. And you're waiting on me. I said, thank you. I love you. You're awesome. And the, what? Amazing. And it's unbelievable. It makes a difference. Um, your, your children, you've got to be real to the younger generation, parents. When you're real, you might not see it. But I'm telling you, you're planting seeds that are unbelievable. Be fair. Parents have to be fair. That's really powerful. Now, I was a public school teacher for 31 years. I retired 15 years ago. See, there's no money in, in uh, Catholic music, so I had to support my family. So, um, but that was a great thing for me, teaching, because I was on stage, you know, eight times a day with, with seventh graders, which are 13-year-olds. So it gave me a chance to really apply everything I was learning in front of the Blessed Sacrament with these young people. And that's why I go out and I give maybe about 30 confirmation retreats a year because that's wow. the age that i really relate to yeah wow so if i'm hearing you correctly uh so the, the offer back at, when you were 24 was 2.2 million in the catholic space maybe that was 2.2 thousand is that is that what you're saying that there's such a dramatic difference this, this what i'm getting at is the obedience that's required when you can actually see that's basically a non-option to someone that's purely looking at what can I get from it? What's the money connected to it, right? Right. And for you to be able to obey and say, okay, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Come well, on. That, Come. that has nothing to do with Marty because <laughs> I was battling that. That has to do with consecrating my life to Jesus through Mary. Because Mary's the key here. You see, from the cross, you know, you know, right behind you is a crucifix, you know? And that's what I, I love crucifixes because that's what, what gets our salvation, the body on the cross, you know? And, and it's so powerful. You know, uh, Jesus is obedient there. You mentioned the word obedience. And his obedience of dying on the cross opens the gates of heaven for me. And that's what brought me... Uh, my obedience to keep going because of his obedience. You see, it, it, it's, it's hard in the beginning, but it becomes very easy when you start to understand that his obedience is easy for my obedience and holding Mary's hand is easy because I won't, I won't flee. I won't run from the cross, my cross or his cross or my journey. Yeah. Beautiful. Marty, thank you so much. Uh, would you be uh, so kind as to close us with a prayer? Sure. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I just ask everybody out there to just repeat after me, Jesus, you are an awesome God. Thank you for my life and thank you for my family. Please send the Holy Spirit now into my heart in a brand new way so that when I go out into the world, 
I can be your love. All in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much for that. You're welcome, Eddie. You're awesome. Love you, brother. God bless you. You too. Take Say care. hello to everybody. All right. God bless.